box kapag okay na. Thank you. Or unmute ka na lang para hindi na mag-flash doon sa recording. Okay, sige. Thank you so much, Erin. So, again, good morning to everybody. So, um, with regards to the chapter, okay, and then, um, this can be found on your normal hemostasis. I don't have my iPad here with me. Pero tignan natin, baka luma, ilabas ko din dito. In the coming slides, what chapter are we? Wait, chapter 37. <laughs> chapter 37. Uh, can you please confirm, what is chapter 37 in your Rodox? Um, those who are opening your book na. Para lang sure ako na tama yung chapter that we are in. Qualitative disorders. Okay. So, sige. One moment. Okay, for those of you who are following, okay, chapter 35, okay? Chapter 35 po tayo for the uh, components of your secondary hemostasis, specifically under the coagulation system. So that will be page 631, right column, okay? 631 of the 6th edition of your Rodox Hematology 2020, Okay. So, I hope we're all on the same page na 631, chapter 35. Ayan, chapter 35. Okay, so I hope everybody is on the same page already. Okay, so let's get started with our discussion for today. So, um, during our um, discussion of the primary hemostasis, we started off with discussing the components of your primary hemostasis, which are your vascular intima and then your platelet. So, we talk about your... Um, blood vessels, your endothelium, both the procoagulant and anticoagulant property of your blood vessels. And at the same time, we also did talk about the different um, platelet function that um, is important when it comes to your primary hemostasis. Now, before we dig into um, your um, the mechanisms of your secondary hemostasis, let us first talk about the component of your secondary hemostasis, which are your coagulation factors, okay? These are your coagulation factors. So coagulation factors, um, what, are, what is the other name for your coagulation factors? They can also go uh, by the name of coagulation proteins because they are proteins. Um, they are also called your procoagulant. Why procoagulant? Because they favor the formation of your um, co of your clot inside the body. And these coagulation factors are mainly um, mainly produced, okay, by our liver. That's why um, a quick background when it comes to your uh, clinical chemistry 1 and 2, you guys are discussing um, proteins and you, I, you are discussing everything about your liver function. And one of the way on how we can um, assess the synthetic function of your, how we can assess the synthetic function of your liver is by measuring your proteins, like your total protein and your albumin. Included in that test, okay, included in that test, you can also make use of 
measuring your coagulation factor to assess the liver fu the synthetic function of your liver. Why? Bakit? Because your coagulation factors, your coagulation proteins are all, most of them, okay, except for one. Um, all, almost all of your coagulation factors, majority of your coagulation factors are produced by the liver. So later on, I'll tell you what is the exemption, okay, um, when it comes to the list of coagulation factor, which one is not produced by the liver, okay? So those are your coagulation factors. And remember, when it comes to your coagulation factors, there are two forms of coagulation that coagulation factors that you can see within your body. Those are your zymogens and your cofactor. So I hope by this time you are very much familiar when it comes to zymogen, when it comes to um, cofactor. So when we say um, zymogen, these are your enzyme precursor. Enzyme precursor meaning to say they are in their inactive form. If you guys could still remember, I always mention that coagulation should happen at the right place at the right time for the right purpose. But these proteins are inside our body. So how do we prevent it from or how is our body maintaining hemostasis without um, how, our, how does our body maintain hemostasis in us that is by maintaining the inactive form of your coagulation factors. So zymogen, okay, or your enzyme precursors, these are the inactive form of your um, co coagulation factors. So if you guys could see, there are a list of coagulation factors on your book, and most of them are in their inactive form, okay? Aside from that, we also have your cofactors, okay? When it comes to your cofactors, these are, um, when it comes to your cofactors, okay, when it comes to your activators, di ba may mga activators tayo when it comes to enzymes, our um, activators can either be a coenzyme or a cofactor. So your coenzyme, anong pinag what is the difference between a coenzyme and a cofactor? Anyone? Sige. What is the difference between a cofactor and a coenzyme? So, none. So remember ha, a coenzyme co is an is a organic, is an organic um, activator when it comes, um, yeah, an, 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 uh, no, an organic um, activator when it comes to your cofactors naman, when it comes to your cofactors, these are inorganic, okay, such as your calcium, your mga electrolytes that you will be discussing um, as you go along in clinical hematology. So, can I see a raise of hand if we're clear with the cofactors? So, your cofactors are needed for your um, enzymes, for your coagulation factor to either be activated or for them to function in the system. So, remember, there is an active site and an allosteric site. So, your cofactors will, um, your cofactors will um, help your zymogens be activated or will help in their function in the coagulation, okay? So when it comes to function, your um, coagulation factors naman, some of them, okay, some of them can be considered, okay, some of them can be considered as serine protease. So these are now the active form of your zymogen. So they are the one now that will cleave protein, that will activate a particular co, that will activate a particular um, coagulation factor, so on and so forth. So it's like a domino effect. Okay, it's like a domino effect. There is a there is an enzyme, okay, or there is a trigger that will activate your co uh, coagulation factor, and that coagulation factor will activate the next coagulation factor, and then the next, and then the next, until they are able to activate your your thrombin. And once your thrombin is activated, your fibrinogen can be converted now to your fibrin and it can form your fibrin clot at the end of your coagulation. That's why later on, you, we will be discussing your coagulation cascade. Okay? We will be discussing your coagulation cascade. The reason why I'm telling you, um, we might either finish the, the discussion today or if, if not, we will be focusing on the coagulation cascade next meeting. Okay? We will be focusing on the coagulation cascade next meeting. What's important for us to understand today are the properties, the pathway, and also the different coagulation factors so that when we move into 
the different tests to evaluate and assess your um, secondary hemostasis, you guys will be able to understand it better. Okay? So aside from your serine proteases, there are also coagulation factors, just like what I mentioned a while back, that are acting as cofactors. So they help accelerate the enzymatic um, reaction in your coagulation process. So if you can see, no, once that you have your wound, why is it that my body can immediately stop the bleeding? Because that is how fast our primary and secondary hemostasis is reacting so that we'll be able to prevent further bleeding or hemorrhage. And finally, we also have your transglutaminase. So transglutaminase that are also affecting the coagulation processes. Okay? So are there any questions so far? If none, can I see a raise of hand, please? If there are no questions. Okay, thank you so much. So let's, let's talk about your coagulation um, coagulation factors or your coagulation protein, specifically when it comes to their nomenclature. So your procoagulants um, were given their name in 1958 by the International Committee for the Standardization of the Nomenclature of the Blood Clotting Factors. Okay, so aside from clotting factors, aside from coagulate, um, coagulation factors, procoagulant, they can also go by the name blood clotting factors. So all of them are one and the same. Okay, so please do remember, ladies and gentlemen, that I will be very critical when it comes to this, especially during your exam. Um, all of your coagulation factors should be written in Roman numeral. So take for example, you have your factor 1. When you say factor 1, it should be in Roman numeral and not in alpha numeric. Okay? So, Roman numeral. So, if you answer otherwise, that will be incorrect. Okay? So, we have different clotting factors. And by the way, when you answer in your quizzes, in your exam, no need to complete the clotting factor 1. No need. Just simply factor 1, factor 2, factor 3, factor 4, so on and so forth. 5 and then 7. So, all of them can be mentioned such as uh, a shortened na lang. Factor 1, factor 2. No need na for coagulation. Factor 1. No need na. Okay? Am I clear? Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear on the writing of your coagulation factors? Okay? And, of course, uh, we were mentioning a while back that most of your um, clotting factors or your coagulation factors are in their inactive form or what we know as your zymogen. Okay? They are in, in their inactive form. Now, how do we denote, okay, how do we denote an activated form of your your clotting factor? So, a, a subscript A, okay, a subscript A, small letter A, appears behind the numeral to denote that the procoagulant has been activated. So, when we take, for example, there's a question, okay, there's a question. What is the, I know, what would be the, what would be the, serine protease that will activate your factor 1. Factor 1 is your fibrinogen. Okay? And then the choices is as, as follow. Letter A, factor 2. Letter B, uh, letter B, activated factor 2. Um, things like that. Okay? So you will be able to identify which would be the correct answer and always choose the activated one. Of course, depending on the question. Okay? Depending on the question. But again, Please take note that once that your um, procoagulants are activated, we need to put okay your subscript A to denote that it is already activated. Okay. Now, when it comes to the zymogen and your serine proteases, um, I want you to look at this. So you have your zymogen here, meaning to say these are your inactive or your um, resting enzyme. So you have your Factor 2, factor 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, and pre-calicrine. Okay? Your pre-calicrine. Now, once activated, they bec these zymogens become now active enzymes as serine proteases. So these are now your activated factor 2, activated factor 7, activated factor 9. So even though that the subscript is behind the number, we do not read it as factor A activated. No. We mentioned it activated factor A. Okay? Are we clear, people? So we nobody would call it na factor A activated. Walang ganun. Okay? So it is activated factor A, uh, factor 2, 
activated factor 7, activated factor 9, activated factor 10, factor 11, factor 12, and also your calicrine. One activated your pre-calicrine becomes now your calicrine. Can I see a raise of hand if we are clear? Hello. Okay. Thank you so much. And we also did mention about cofactors, correct? So these are the different cofactors of your active proteases. So your fa activated factor 7 needs your TF. Ano yung TF? Talent fee? No. That is your tissue factor. That is your fa um, clotting factor number 3. Okay? Number 3. Or factor 3. So later, we'll talk about that. Okay? Your tissue factor. Your fa activated factor 10. Factor 5 yung kailangan niya. Your, fa your activated factor 9. It needs your factor 8. Okay? Your um, activated um, factor 12 and your calicrine needs your MHWK, okay? That is your high molecular weight kininogen. Again, high molecular weight kininogen. If, again, you need to get the proper spelling, go to chapter 35, okay? And look for the spelling of your high molecular weight kininogen. And in the exam, no abbreviation, please. The um, cofactor for your thrombine, we have your thrombomodulin. Your protein C, this one, um, the, the last two rows that you see here are for your fibrinolysis. So you have your um, protein S, your protein Z for your protein C and your um, tissue factor, um, um, tissue factor pathway um, inhibitor and your Z-dependent um, protease inhibitor. Again, these two are for fibrinolysis na, okay? Fibrinolysis, okay? So let's get started and get to know some of your coagulation factors. So there are a lot, to be honest. And as early as now, you need to memorize all of them, okay? So what do we need to memorize when it comes to them? Of course, the factor, the preferred name, other names if there's any. Um, when it comes to the pathway later on, we'll be talking about um, your coagulation factor based on their characteristic, their properties, and then based on their pathway. I'll teach you a way on how you can memorize it better than this table, okay? And then for the other information, there are some information here that are important when it comes to your, uh, when it comes to your coagulation factor. So please take note of those as we go along. So there are four slides all about your coagulation factor. So let's get started with the first one, and that is your factor one. Factor one is the ultimate. I know. Eh, factor one is the ultimate substrate of your thrombin. Okay, your factor one, also known as your fibrinogen, um, is a protein produced by the liver. Okay, so it is the coagulation with the most concentration in your plasma. So most concentrated co uh, clotting factor in our body. Once activated, I want you to take note, guys, that this does not become an active enzyme okay it it is not activated as an enzyme but rather they are activated to become fibrin monomer fibrin monomer that will um stabilize okay not stabilize okay fibrin monomer that will form your fibrin network or a fibrin mesh that will um help um solidify or strengthen your clot during bleeding okay remember that it is um, synthesized by the liver and it is the ultimate substrate of your thrombin. Okay? Your fibrinogen, if you guys could remember, we mentioned that your glycocalyx absorb albumin. Aside from albumin, it also absorbs your fibrinogen and store it in your alpha granules. Okay? We're storing it in your alpha granules. Now, your fibrinogen can be assessed, okay? The activity of your fibrinogen can be assessed by the two tests your PT and your PTT, okay? Later, I explain ko sa inyo itong part na to. I'll be skipping this part because I will focus on that when we go to the evaluation after your prelim exams, okay? So again, um, always remember that your fibrinogen is an APR. What do we mean by APR? It is an acute phase reactant and it is increased in PISO. What is PISO? Pregnancy, inflammation, stress, and presence or intake of oral contraceptives. Again, your, your fibrinogen is an acute phase reactant. Acute phase reactant meaning to say it increases 
during infection. That's why it was also mentioned during our discussion in immunology. Remember again that your acute phase reactant, in specifically your fibrinogen, increases during when? During your, uh, it increases during your, uh, it increases during your piso, your pregnancy, inflammation, uh, stress, and um, intake of oral contraceptives. Can I see Arisa Van if everybody was able to get that? Hello? Clear? Okay. Thank you so much. Now, aside from your fibrinogen, we're just gonna talk about them, ha? And then I'll just um, input um, the important details about them. Okay? So your prothrombin, okay, your prothrombin is also known as your pre-thrombin. It is your factor 2. Once activated, it is known to be your thrombin. Thrombin na lang. Okay? It is known to be your thrombin. In your in the quiz, sir, take for example, you ask us of the um, coagula specific coagulation factor. How should we answer? So let us settle the score now. Um, sir, will you allow us, take for example, sir, I don't, I don't remember the preferred name, but I know that it is factor 2. Will you be accepting factor 2? 2. two um, two considerations, okay? If take for example, the answer is thrombin and you simply answered factor 2, that is incorrect. Why? Because factor 2 is inactive. You should answer factor 2A to denote activated factor 2, which is now your thrombin. Nagigets tayo. So, no abbreviation. So, always remember that when it comes to the name, if you write na kunwari factor 2, do not write na on the side yung thrombin. Kasi take for example, um, you answered factor 2 and then the preferred name that you, po you put was thrombin. I will consider that wrong. Okay? So, many of you kasi, they, you, put a, you put a lot of answer hoping that I will just simply consider one. No, it's not the case. Okay? If you put a lot of answer, it just means that you really don't know the answer so you just put everything you know. Okay? So, during our exam, if you put um, if the question requires an activated form, so it's either thrombin, okay, you can answer either thrombin or activated factor two, only the two or your pre or um, only those two answer, okay. And then for if you guys are answering an in, a zymogen or an inactive form, you can simply answer factor two again Roman numeral and then the name, take for example prothrombin or prethrombin. Avoid the open and close parenthesis na. Okay, na factor 2, prothrombin. Avoid those instances na. Okay? Um, avoid those instances, number one, for ease of checking on my end. And at the end of the day, um, gets naman na natin eh, na factor 2 is prothrombin. So, during your exam, you can either answer any of those two. Just make sure that you answer the, the correct form or the correct way when asked in the question. Depending on the question, that is being asked. Okay? So, are we clear, people? Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? Malinaw ba tayo? Para, ano, uh, during your exam, nobody will ask, Sir, um, how do we need, uh, how are we going to answer the quiz? Ganyan, ganyan. Okay? So, again, ha, let's go back. For your factor 2, also known as your prothrombin or your pre-thrombin, the activated form of your factor 2 is your thrombin. Um, it is it function as a serine protease. Okay, it is part of the common pathway, and it is the key protease of your coagulation pathway. Why do we mention that it is the key coagulation um, factor or the key protease? Because without prothrombin, without thrombin, your fibrinogen cannot be activated. Even if all of the other coagulation factors are present and are functioning well, if you have deficiency or, or if you lack or if you do not have a functioning prothrombin that can be activated to your thrombin, your fibrinogen cannot be converted to fibrin. Okay? So that will be a, a big uh, it will be a big problem inside your body. Now, aside from that, remember that your thrombin is actually um, a, a feed, it has a feedback mechanism. Okay? Once that your thrombin, your prothrombin is activated, your thrombin now, okay, your thrombin not only activates your fibrinogen, it also activates your factor 5, 8, 11, um, 11, and your 13. Sir, why? 
Okay, why does it need to activate 5, 8, 11, and 13? Okay, so um, once that your thrombin is activated, it also helps the other pathway activate more coagulation factor. And specifically, your, pro -tro your thrombin activates your 5, 8, 11, and your 13. Okay, again ha, it's not only your fibrinogen that is activated by your thrombin. It also activates your factor 5, 8, 11, and 13. And it also activates your platelet. If you guys could remember, when we were talking about your platelet lumi aggregometry last meeting, we mentioned that your thrombin is also an, um, an aggregating factor or an aggregating agent for your platelet because they promote your full aggregation and full platelet secretion. Can I see a raise of if we're clear? Are we clear with thrombin? Medyo delayed ba ako? Or delayed lang yung response nyo? Hello? Are we clear? Can I see early some honey for clear? Okay. Am I delayed? Delayed ba ako? Can you type on the chat box? Delayed ba? Yung ano ko? Delayed? Hindi. Yeah? No. Okay. So baka nagre-review lang kayo sa next class. Ganyan. Okay. So Next, we have your tissue factor. Oh, kababayan. Okay. Your tissue factor, also known as your factor 3, doesn't have an active form. Okay, why? Because cl uh, clotting factor 3 is active already. Your tissue factor, or also known as your tissue thromboplastin, is a cofactor. Kanina na, na mention natin siya, di ba? It is a cofactor of what? It is a cofactor of factor 7. Okay, activated factor 7. Now, um, I also did mention a while back that there is one coagulation factor not produced by our liver. And that is your tissue factor or your tissue thromboplastin. Your tissue thromboplastin is not produced by the liver because it is produced by your tissue. Second, it is not found in your plasma on a, on a normal basis. Why? Because it is found in your tissue. That's why, remember guys, uh, when, you, when we were um, discussing about capillary puncture, we wipe off the first drop of blood to avoid tissue fluid contamination. And in the tissue fluid, okay, in the tissue fluid are your tissue factor or your tissue thromboplastin as well. Okay? So they are usually found in most of our tissues, organ, and also our blood vessel. So what is the nice thing to know about your, your tissue factor? Not produced by the liver, not seen in your plasma, and it is a cofactor for your factor 7. Okay? And it is a main player of the extrinsic pathway. Again, do not get um, bothered when it comes to the, um, to the pathway. I'll tell you how you can memorize it easier later. Promise. Mga 5 minutes, memorize mo na yun. Okay? And then we also have your factor 4. Factor 4, also known as your ionic calcium or simply your calcium, it functions as a mineral, okay, that is important in all of your coagulation pathway. We have three pathways kasi, your common, your extrinsic, and your intrinsic pathway. Now, your calcium, your ionic calcium is important in each of the pathway. That's why, remember, when you are using your EDTA, your, your sodium citrate, your potassium oxide, they all bind to your calcium. They bind to calcium so that they can inhibit the coagulation, whatever pathway that may be. Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? Hello? Okay, good. Now, next, moving forward, we also have your factor 5. Okay, your factor 5 is your pro-accelerin. Okay, pro accelerate. So your other name is your labile factor um, or your accelerator globulin. Your pro accelerin um, is a cofactor. That's why it is not, um, it will not be um, activated. It is part of the common pathway. Uh, yeah, actually it, it will be activated pala. It will be activated. Okay, and again, it is part of your common pathway. So again, it is released by your alpha cells. And there is a disease, okay, where um, deficiency of your pro would cause your para-hemophilia, also known as your Oren's disease. 
Okay? Again, um, deficiency on your factor 5 will lead to parahemophilia, also known as your Oren's disease. Sir, um, why do we, um, is parahemophilia different from hemophilia A, hemophilia B? Yes, there are different types of hemophilia. For proaxillerin, kapag konte or may deficiency ka sa proaxillerin, if you have deficiency in factor 5, that will lead to the presence of parahemophilia, also known as your Oren's disease. Okay? So that is for your proaxillerin. From your common pathway, release of your from your alpha granules, um, leading now a deficiency of your um, factor 5 will lead to parahemophilia or Oren's disease. Next, we also have your pro-convertin, factor 7. Sir, you missed one number. Yeah, that was intentional. Let me just make a quick chica. Okay, when it comes to your factor 6, it was known, um, there was a factor 6 before, but later on, they um, they discovered that it is just an activated factor 5. That's why they remove your factor 6 na. Okay, uh, um, they realize na it's just simply your pro as well. Okay, an activated pro So, they remove factor 6 and they did not replace it anymore. Okay, so dapat ganun, di ba? Pag, um, uh, nung inalis na nila si 6, hindi na nila pinalitan. Okay? So, that is for your factor 6. Okay? Let's go to factor 7, your proconvertin. Your proconvertin is also not your stable factor. Proaxillerin, labile factor. Proconvertin, stable factor. Um, proconvertin is also known as your serum, protrombin, con uh, conversion accelerator, or your SPCA. Parang gusto ko ilabas sa quiz tuloy yan. Okay, mahaba. Serum protrombin conversion accelerator or your SPCA, also known as your auto protrombin 1. Okay? So they accelerate the what? They accelerate the conversion of your fac your factor 2 or your protrombin. Why? You will discover this later when you go to your extrinsic pathway. Okay? You go to extrinsic pathway. So so your proconvertin is considered to be the coagulation factor that has the shortest half-life. It has the shortest half-life and it is the first factor to decrease during warfarin therapy. Okay? Yung mga nakalagay dito sa other information are almost all, all of them are important. So you need to I, uh, memorize. This table pa lang, men, buhay na buhay na kayo during the exams. Okay? So it has the shortest half-life. It is the first factor to decrease during warfarin therapy. Um, sir, when do we use warfarin therapy? Warfarin therapy are used um, when patient has thrombosis tendency. Remember, um, we discussed your um, thrombotic disorders, um, your pregnancy, oral contraceptives. They increase the formation of clot inside the body. So for patients with such condition, they can take in Coumadin kuma or Coumarin eh, and also your warfarin. So... Warfarin are anticoagulants, oral anticoagulants that um, patients take in to prevent bystander clotting. Okay, when you say bystander, yung tipong wala namang nangyayari and then nag-trip lang mag-clot ng dugo mo. Okay? Again, that's dangerous because that can lead to occlusion of your blood vessels. Okay? So that is pro-convertin. Can I share this event? Kung malinaw pa tayo, are we still <laughs> Clear? Clear? Okay, good. Next, we, we go to your anti-hemophilic factor. Ang beshiwaps ni Von Willebrand factor. Okay, why do I say beshiwaps ni Von Willebrand factor? Because you guys would always see your anti-hemophilic factor bound to your Von Willebrand factor. Sulat mo na, girl. Okay? So, anti-hemophilic factor, also known as your anti-hemophilic factor A, your anti-hemophilic factor globulin, and your platelet factor 1. Okay, it is a cofactor found in your intrinsic pathway. Don't worry about that. It is produced mainly by your liver, your hepatocytes. There are free anti-hemophilic factor. There are free factor 8. But the problem is, okay, they are unstable. Kaya kailangan nila lagi yung kanilang partner, which is your von Willebrand factor. Okay? That's why in most of the references, you would see factor um von Willebrand factor colon factor 8. Bakit? Because they are always <coughs> bound to each other. Okay? Sana all, di ba? 
na wherever you go, okay, wherever you go, this is parang true love, di ba? Pag wala yung isa, unstable yung isa. But did you know, Bon Willie brand factor can function on its own. It's really just factor 8 that is so dependent of Bon Willie brand factor. But anyway, this is another story for another time. Remember that again, your anti-hemophilic factor, um, when there is a deficiency in your anti-hemophilic factor, um, that can lead to your hemophilia. Okay? Hemophilia A. This is the sakit of the royal blood, di ba? Yung royal, ano, if you guys could remember, this is the common example for the um, law of heredity by Gregor Mendel. Di ba? So, again, hemophilia A for anti-hemophilic factor. And remember, sir, what is the blood component cryoprecipitate? This is cryoprecipitate, hindi psi cryo. You remove the Y before, uh, you remove the Y after C. This is cryoprecipitate. Okay, ano to? Iyak? Hindi. Okay, pre- pre- yung precipitate ng iyak ko, sir? No. Cryoprecipitate is a blood fa- a blood component rich in factor 8. Okay? Again, rich in factor 8. You'll discuss this more in your blood bank with... Who's your blood bank? Uh, ay, wag na pala tayo magsikahan ng gano'n. Kasi recorded to. Okay? And this is for everyone. Okay? So, uh, whether Sir Vico or Sir Nathan, you will be discussing cryoprecipitate um, in the coming days. Okay? Next, we also have your plasma thromboplastin component. Your pl- plasma thromboplastin component is your factor 9. This is my favorite, factor 9. Factor 9, this is Christmas factor. Ayan. Christmas factor. This is also known as platelet cofactor. Platelet cofactor 2 and your anti-hemophilic factor B. Um, it is also included in your intrinsic pathway and deficiency of this coagulation factor will lead to hemophilia B. Okay, so we have three hemophilia. Para hemophilia, that is factor 5. Factor 8, um, hemophilia A. Factor 9, hemophilia B. Okay, also remember the other name, anti-hemophilic factor globulin and your Christmas factor for your factor 8 and your factor 9 respectively. Now, can I see a raise of hand if we're clear on this particular table and if we can move on to the next slide. Clear tayo? Okay. Thank you so much. I guess I'm, I will not be able to finish because I only have uh, 15 minutes, 18 minutes, but I think I'll be able to at least discuss according to their properties. Okay? According to their properties. And then my promise um, about how you guys could memorize the pathway according to number easily. Okay? Easily talaga. Habang nalili, mamaya pagkatapos na pagkatapos ng class, memorize mo na siya. Okay? So, we also have your factor 10. Okay? Your factor 10 is your Stuart Prower factor. It is really Prower, not power. Okay? Stuart Prower factor, also known as Stuart factor, Prower factor, or your autoprotrombin 3. Okay? Autoprotrombin 3. A while back, we mentioned about your autoprotrombin 1. Okay? Your autoprotrombin 1, that is your pro-convertin. Okay? For your autoprotrombin 3, that is your Stuart Prower factor. Okay? It is a serine protease and it is found in your common pa- common pathway. Okay? Next, we also have your factor 11. This is your plasma thromboplastin. Okay? Antecedent. Okay? Remember that, ha? Plasma thromboplastin antecedent as opposed to factor 9. O, diba? Magka... Maligaw lang yung one mo, girl, boy. Diba? Lutang ka na. Plasma thromboplastin component, that is 9. Plasma thromboplastin antecedent, that is 11. Okay? And this is known as to be, to be your anti-hemophilic, um, anti-hemophilic factor C. Ah, so ibig sabihin, sir, ito naman yung para sa hemophilia C. Hindi hemophilia C ang tawag. That is your Rosenthal syndrome. So, deficiency in your factor 11, that would lead to Rosenthal syndrome. So, it is activated by your contact factor complex in your thrombin. So, uh, sir, what is my contact factor complex? Your contact factor complex are your precalacrine, your high molecular weight kininogen, and your factor 12. Ayan. So, later, explain ko naman yung tatlong yon. Again, ha? For those of you lang na nagno-notes, what is the contact factor complex? Contact factor complex is 12 high molecular weight kininogen and then your precalacrine. Okay? So, yung mga walang number-number, sila halos yung mga contact factor plus number 12. 
Nagigets? Yung HMWK pre-K, okay? HMWK high molecular weight kininogen pre-K, your pre calic cream, and then your 12, all of them are together. That is your contact factor complex, okay? And then your thrombin also activates your factor 11. Now, we also have your factor 12, also known as your H-man factor. H-man factor is your glass factor or your contact factor. They are... Um, they are uh, included in your um, intrinsic pathway. Um, and then deficiency can lead to negative bleeding. Okay? Deficiency of this, um, remember this, guys, no? Rem when it comes to your contact factors, your pre-K, HMWK, and your H-man factor, or your factor 12, kahit may deficiency sila, normal pa rin yung clotting sa ating katawan. Mamaya, pagdating natin dun sa mga susunod nating lecture, I'll explain this further to you. Okay? So, remember, your um, dagdag ko na lang, since nasulat nyo naman na, your contact factor complex is responsible in your in vitro coagulation. Okay? In vitro coagulation. They do not participate <coughs> most of the time when it comes to in vivo coagulation. But when it comes to in vitro coagulation, they are um, part of the coagulation cascade. Meaning to say, inside our body, their deficiency doesn't really make any difference at all. When it comes to phenotype, um, wala naman nakikita bleeding whatsoever. Kasi nga, um, the other coagulation factor can compensate for their deficiency. Okay? Unlike the other diseases like your parahemophilia, hemophilia A, hemophilia B, Rosenthal syndrome, um, all of those deficiency can lead to excessive bleeding. Okay? So, that is factor 12. And finally, we have your factor 13. Your factor 13 is also known as your fibrin stabilizing factor. Remember that it is the last coagulation factor that will stabilize your fibrin network once it is already in place, your fibrin stabilizing factor comes in many names. It can be known as your loculorand factor, your fibrinase, fibrinoligase, your plasma transglutaminase because it is a transglutaminase, part of the common um, pathway, and it is you um it function as to stabilize your fibrin clot. If you have deficiency, ito lang, if you have deficiency in your factor 13, that will result to a poor wound healing. Okay? Because every now and then, na remember this guys, no? Para kang nagtayo ng kastilyong buhangin. O, di ba? Kastilyong buhangin. You can put up a sand castle, but every time that it, it, it is hit by the wave, it will crash. Di ba? Mawawala siya. Parang ganun din yung platelet or yung clot natin and yung fibrin network natin. Every time that you um, your body is able to form that, um, it will still disintegrate and um, destabilize because we do not have your factor 13. Okay? So that's how important it is. Um, use, uh, during your test, PTPTT, it would have a normal coagulation result even if you have deficiency in your factor 13. That's why the test that we use okay, in identifying deficiency in your factor 13 is your 5 molar urea solubility test. Do not worry. I'll again further discuss this when we go to the different tests to assess your secondary hemostasis. But so far, are there any questions or clarification? If not, can I see a raise of hand if we're clear on this table? Clear? Okay, now let us move on to the last table, last part of the table before I discuss to you the coagulation factor based on properties. <clears throat> based on property. So we also have your precalacrine. So remember your precalacrine, um, also known as your calacrine once activated, is also known as your Fletcher factor. Um, it is a part of the contact factor complex. You also have your high molecular weight kininogen, also known as your Fritz Gerald factor, Williams factor, Flaugiac uh, uh, factor, contact activation factor. Diba dami name? So, 
that is your contact factor complex together with your factor 12. You also have your plated factor 3, which is a phospholipid phosphatidylserine. Your PF3, if you guys could remember this, um, it is an assembled molecule. Remember, do you guys remember this? Uh, we talk about this during your the ultra structure of your platelet that um, in your phosphatidylserine, that is where all of your coagulation factor assembled. Okay, and it is released by your platelets. And finally, we also have your von Willebrand factor, which is your restocytin factor. Okay, restocytin cofactor. So it functions for platelet adhesion, and it is your factor eight carrier. Why? Because your factor eight alone, free factor eight, is unstable. It needs your von Willebrand factor. So your von Willebrand factor is produced by various cells in the body, such as your um, such as your endothelial cells, your megakaryocytes, and it can also be stored in your alpha granules, specifically in your wavel pallid bodies. Okay, makikita nda tayo dun, ha? Where can you find your von, von Willebrand factor? In your wavel pallid, pallid bodies. So your von Willebrand factor can be degraded by your Adam TS13. And remember, your von Willebrand factor among blood group O is lo has lower levels of von Willebrand factor compared to other blood groups. And your von Willebrand factor, aside from that, is also an APR. What is an APR again? Acute phase reactant. But this time, it's not for PISO, but rather for PITS. What is for PITS? Pregnancy, infection, not inflammation, ha? infection, trauma, and stress. Again, pregnancy, infection, trauma, and stress. Why it um let me just um differentiate to you guys now. Inflammation is not necessarily infection. Okay? Because inflammation can be because of your immune response. Your infection is because of a foreign uh, microorganism entering our body. Now let me tell you, sir, bakit naman increase siya during infection? Remember that one of the things that is produced during phagocytosis are adhesion molecules. Adhesion molecules such as your P-selectin and also your von Willebrand factor. Okay? Your von Willebrand factor. p so means pregnancy, inflammation, stress, and oral contraceptives. PITS naman, P-I-T-S, <coughs> pregnancy, infection, uh, trauma, and ano yung S? Stress. S stress pa rin. Okay? Clear tayo kanyang si Arisa Vanif. Mali now, people. So we only have seven minutes left. Okay? Clear tayo. So I guess I will not be able to finish it talaga. No? Sadyang itinadhana, hindi ako makakatapos ng, ng ano ngayon. So for you guys na lang, para hindi tayo cut short, I don't want to cut short the lecture para ma malinaw tayo. We'll meet on Thursday. So yung promise ko na lang sa inyo. Sir, how will we be able to memorize okay wait lang how are we going to memorize ayan ganyan okay how are we going to memorize the coagulation factors so remember you have three coagulation pathway okay what are those three pathway you have your intrinsic okay you have your intrinsic okay you have your um extrinsic and then you have your common path way. Okay? Intrinsic, extrinsic, and your common pathway. Papakita ko sa inyo muna dito based on your asan ba yung table natin na muna? Ayan. Can you guys see this? Okay. So remember, when it comes to your fa hello, can you see the, the ano? Can you see the uh, what do you call this? Can you see the slide? Can you um can some can you, you guys raise your hand? Kita. Okay, in your extrinsic pathway, that is your color green. Okay, in your extrinsic pa in your extrinsic pathway, there are only th <laughs> three. <laughs> there are only two coagulation factors involved. Okay, your seven and your three. Madali lang tandaan di ba? Seven and three. Okay, seven and then three. For your intrinsic pathway, this comes now. Um, this one is um, a lot more um, rather complicated. Ito na lang. Ito na lang pakita ko sa inyo. It is more complicated. Mas madami sila. So the factor involved in your 
intrinsic pathway are the following, okay? You have your factor, you have your contact factors, your precalecrine, your high molecular weight kininogen, and then your factor 12, okay? Aside from, aside from your factor 12, you also have your um, factor 9, okay? Factor 9, and then factor um, 8, okay? Together with your von Willebrand factor. 9 and 8, okay? 9, 8, lang sa intrinsic. 9, 8, von Willebrand factor together with your contact complex. Tawagin na lang natin silang contact complex para mas ma-easier for the tongue. Now, for the um, common pathway, ito naman yung sa common pathway. 1, 2, 5, 10. Okay? 1, 2, 5, 10. Okay? 1, 2, 5, and 10. So, let's try to um, summarize everything para alam ninyo. What are the common what are the other... Ito lang yung mga main coagulation factors natin, ha? So, how are we going to memorize them? Simple, okay? How are we going to memorize them? So, when it comes to your intrinsic pathway, you only have two, okay? Actually, hindi naman dalawa lang yan. So, you have your eight, okay? Your eight, nine, again, ha? Von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor kasama na ni eight. Von Willebrand factor, 8, 9, 12, high molecular weight kininogen, HM, WK, and your pre-K. I call it your PK. Okay? Your pre-K. So that is for your intrinsic pathway. Okay? 8, 9, 12, con ayan, kung gusto mong i-memorize, 8, 9, Von Willebrand, 8, 9, contact group. Okay? Ano yung contact group? High molecular weight kininogen, pre -calicrine. And your 12. For the extrinsic pathway, mabilis lang to kasi dalawa lang yan. Your tissue factor, okay, tissue factor and factor 7. Okay? Factor 7. Okay? And then for your common pathway, mabilis lang. 1, your fibrinogen. 2, 5, 2 times 5, 10. Okay? So what are included in your common pathway? 1, 2, 5, 10. In your extrinsic tissue factor 7, in your intrinsic, one will be brand 8, 9, 12, high molecular weight kininogen, and your pre calicry Are we clear, people? Can I see a raise of hand if you guys can memorize this now by the end of the class? Um, later on, uh, when it comes to properties, there are different properties than when it comes to your, when it comes to your, there are different properties of your, uh, what do you call this? There are different properties of your, um, coagulation factor. And there's also a way on how we can memorize it easier. Okay? Kunwari, what are the prothrombin group? Okay? Example ko sa inyo para makita na ninyo, no? What are the prothrombin group? This is your 2, 7, 9, 10. Okay? How do I memorize it? 2, 7, 2, 7, 9, 10. 2 plus 7 is 9. Anong kasunod ni 9, 10? 2, 7, 9, 10. So that's how I memorize my prothrombin group. What about the other group? For my um, fibrinogen group that is 1, 5, 8, 13. Tignan natin kung tama ako. O, di ba? 1, 5, 8, 13. Kasi 1, 5, 5 plus 8 is 13. Ganun lang. 1, 5, 8, 13. Yun yung mga need nyo i-memorize. Okay? But for now, <coughs> ayun nga. Again, what are the common, what are the common factor, common um, coagulation factors of the common pathway? We have your what? We have your 1, 2, 5, 10. For your extrinsic, 3 and tissue factor. For your intrinsic, we have your 8 with von Willebrand factor to make it stable. Factor 9, 10, uh, factor, <coughs> factor 9, and then the contact group. Okay? And then the contact group, which is your factor 12, high molecular weight kininogen, and your what? Your pre Calicrine. So with that, thank you so much for listening, everyone. So we will be meeting next Thursday to finish up with your coagulation factor. So if there's any question or clarification, please send in the message now. So Irene, please uh, stop the recording and